Alright, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. For today's video, we are going to be doing part 11, believe it or not, yes, 11, of reacting to the worst aquariums I could find. You think by video 11 I would have a better title figured out for this series, but no, I don't. It's just reacting to the worst aquariums I could find. Um, it is what it is for now, though. So basically, I have a whole bunch of pictures I found online of absolutely horrible aquariums. Um, chow. Anyway, so... Like I'm talking evaporated water, tanks way too small for big fish, and so much more, but we're gonna get into that very, very soon. In fact, we're gonna get into it right now, starting with the first picture, which comes from a barber shop. Now, this tank is an Oscar tank, um, but not only is it a small tank, it's actually a small tank that's split into other tanks. So basically there's tank dividers in here that are dividing the one, we'll say medium sized tank. It looks to be, I'm just going to estimate, like a 29 gallon tank, which on its own is pretty small for one Oscar. But here we have tank dividers in dividing the tank up, and we have like, I think a total of three Oscars in this tank. There might even be more, it's kind of hard to see from the distortion, but three Oscars in a 29-ish gallon tank. But they don't even have the full tank to swim around in. These two Oscars are cramped on the left side. Probably have like 10 gallons. Like, two huge Oscars in 10 gallons worth of water. I mean, these fish need like 75 gallon tanks when they're full grown. So this little tank is not going to do it. And honestly, the divider looks dirty. There's some algae here and there. That's honestly just tank maintenance stuff. But I think the real issue here is the tank size. This next tank, if you will, is more of a pond, but isn't really a pond at all. Uh, this was found in a cafe, and it looks to be some sort of tabletop pond, I guess. I don't really know what else to call it. It only looks to be a couple of inches deep, so I'm going to estimate maybe 5 to 8 gallons, to be honest with you. There's a small internal filter, which is good, but addressing the elephant in the room, literally, um, there's huge goldfish in here. I mean, this big goldfish on the right is almost as long as the entire pond. <laughs> These poor goldfish, it looks to be a total of three fancy goldfish. Um, and three common goldfish. These fancy goldfish don't look full grown yet, and neither do the two other common goldfish. The only one there that's really full grown is the huge goldfish, and most of them have the same potential to get that size. So this little, I don't even know what you want to call it, is absolutely not a suitable home for these guys by any means. I mean, I don't get what is with people not reading the minimum tank size sticker at the pet store. Like, it literally says minimum tank size. It's not that hard. This next one here is a saltwater tank. It is the Fluval Evo saltwater tank, which is actually an aquarium I've kept in the past, but that's totally besides the point. I think the most apparent thing here is the state at which this aquarium is in. It doesn't look like the light is turned on, which is concerning because if it looks nasty without the light on, I'm just afraid of how it's gonna look with the light on. There's tons of algae as we can see in here. Um, it looks like the water has evaporated so much that the heater and the pump are no longer in water. Uh, if you look down here, we'll actually zoom in, you can see the entire heater and about half of the pump and the rest of the chamber is dry. And if you didn't know, heaters cannot be plugged in without water. They'll literally explode. That's a recipe for disaster. So not only is there not enough water in this tank, um, the tank's just gross. There's salt creep everywhere, which is just a sign of uh, neglected maintenance. And as for fish, the actual stocking in here isn't bad. There's one clownfish and one mandarin goby. Um, the clownfish is probably fine if this aquarium were set up correctly. However, the mandarin goby, those fish need larger aquariums, not because they get big, they're gorgeous fish and they do stay small. It's because the type of food they eat actually needs space to live, if that makes sense. Basically, they eat copepods, which are tiny, tiny little marine organisms that live on the live rock in the aquarium. And these mandarin gobies eat so much of these little copepods that if your tank's not big enough to sustain them, they'll just run out and they'll starve and die. So honestly, I'm assuming this mandarin goby has not been in this tank very long. It's probably almost out of food and also probably isn't going to last very long. Um, whether it dies between the poor water quality, the high salinity because of evaporation, and clearly they're not topping off any fresh water here, or starvation, this tank is clearly a disaster waiting to happen, if it hasn't already happened. This fish tank was ironically found at a sushi restaurant, and from a distance, it just looks like a classic bad aquarium. It's a silver arowana. It should be in a bigger tank. The tank's bare, the tank's empty, the tank's boring. But the closer we look, the more concerning it actually gets. Um, addressing the biggest fish first, this silver arowana is huge. It's a predator fish, and in reality, they're generally kept without tank mates, which isn't an issue. 
at least I thought. And we're gonna get to that in a second. Moving on to filtration though, there doesn't look to be any real filtration, at least that we can see. There's a big pump down there, which appears to just be pumping water through the yellow hose up and then out, if that makes sense. So just kind of recirculating. There could be an external filter that we don't see. However, based off the condition of this tank, I honestly think it's just a pump recirculating water with no actual filter media. Um, but if we zoom into the tank, uh, not only do we see some surprise tank mates, including a fork. I'm not sure why there's a fork in this aquarium. Out of all the decor, they chose a single fork. Uh, besides that, if we zoom in, there's a neon blue dwarf gourami. Okay. There's also a little baby angelfish. Both of these fish look small enough to be eaten by the arowana, so concerning. And then besides the obvious low water level here, the other thing I see is just a random hose clamp on the bottom of the aquarium. So, as little as it looks like it's going on here, there's actually more than meets the eye. Unfortunately, it's not that good in this case. These uh, smaller tropical fish need to be out of this tank as soon as possible because you get the point. Moving on. I'm not sure if you guys were thinking this could get any worse, but sure enough, take a look at this. This uh, otherwise pretty nice bowfront aquarium is being treated as a koi pond. Um, with huge, huge koi fish. Now, koi fish generally start out pretty small. You can get them at Petco and PetSmart for just a couple dollars. However, it takes a lot of food, a lot of time, a lot of work to get your koi to grow this big. And the fact that there's so many koi fish growing so big in this, I'm just gonna go with like a 50, 50 ish gallon aquarium because I don't have the actual dimensions here. I'm basically just going off this picture. But the sheer size and number of fish in this aquarium is absolutely crazy. There is easily like 20 fish in this pond, a couple huge koi, a couple huge goldfish, well, actually more than a couple. This tank has truly gotten to the point of no return. The water is so murky and there's so many fish packed into this small aquarium. I can't even see through the tank to see if there's an intake for a canister filter, if there's a hang on back filter, if there's a heater. I don't know if any of that equipment is on this tank because I literally can't see past the fish in this tank. Um, honestly, the best course of action here, easy 50% water change every single day until you can get some of these fish out. The koi need to go to a koi pond. Most of the large goldfish need to get out of there too. Once this tank is cleaned back up, it's probably suitable for, we're just gonna say, two to five goldfish. I don't know what kind of goldfish are in here exactly. A lot of them look like just the common goldfish, which are just the generic like feeder goldfish or comet goldfish. However, there is a nice color variety going on here. I'm sure someone with a pond would absolutely love to take care of these guys and give them a better home. And hopefully that can happen soon for these guys because this tank's really not doing it. The tank's pretty actually. The tank has potential. The stand's nice, the hood is nice, but the stocking is not. In fact, the fish are literally screaming to get out. And to finish this off today, the last aquarium is another saltwater tank, but this aquarium doesn't look bad, actually. It's a really nice Pico reef tank. If you don't know what a Pico reef tank is, it's basically just a small saltwater reef aquarium. There's a ton of live coral in here. It all looks open, it all looks really happy. However, unfortunately, back to the stocking level thing again. There's two pretty large, what look to be maroon clownfish in here. Now, not only do maroon clownfish get bigger than typical clownfish, they also get very aggressive. And because they do get bigger, they need a bigger sized aquarium than most clownfish, being probably upwards of around 40 gallons. And I can only guess this tank is less than around three or four gallons. I mean, they even put like a soda cup next to it for size reference. And there's no way this tank holds more than like four gallons. So while the tank looks cool, the coral looks happy, these saltwater fish probably came from the ocean, to be honest. A lot of saltwater fish are not captive bred. Some of the clownfish are, uh, but the majority of saltwater fish are not captive bred yet. But the moral to this story is regardless if the coral is doing well, these two fish, and there even is a little fire shrimp back there, uh, these guys need a bigger aquarium. You can't keep clownfish of that size and have the potential to get much bigger, uh, around six inches to be exact, for maroon clowns in a tank that's like four gallons. Like, common sense here. Come on guys, you can do better than that, I promise. Anyways, that is going to be a wrap for part 11 to this series. I'm constantly on the lookout for more of these pictures and hopefully part 12 will be coming very soon. Believe it or not, it is actually difficult to find these pictures of these horrible aquariums, which is actually a good thing. That means that there's a lot of people out there treating their fish right as they should, keeping them in the appropriate size aquariums and implementing proper aquarium husbandry. But that is it for this week's video. I will catch you in the next video where we add some fish to a new aquarium we set up. If you haven't watched the Higer Aquarium unboxing video, I would highly recommend checking out that video. And then I'll see you guys next week when we add some fish to that tank. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching and good. Bye.